atmosphere is going to be like, then it becomes a little bit harder to yeah. prepare for. Yeah. So what I like is that the fact that they've been so consistent here in particular means that they've been able to transfer the training stuff mm -hmm. onto the pitch quite yeah. seamlessly. Yeah, I mean, it's certainly a bonus for the fans as well, knowing, you know, more or less they're going to come to home park and they are going to be treated to a show. From, from their team. Yeah, and there's an exciting brand of football that they want to play. It's, it's not kind of reserved, it's expressive, mm -hmm. it's expansive, and it and sometimes that comes at a cost, whereby if you are too expansive, yeah. you can be quite susceptible to being hit on a counter-attack, but Argyll have seemed to have nullified that quite easily or quite comfortably already this season. So it's showcasing the balance of being in possession and being creative, mm -hmm. but also being able to regain possession when they lose it as well. Yeah. And the, the new players that we've we've had in, the new signings that have been made, they all seem to have fitted in really well with the squad. There must be a lot of work that goes in behind the scenes in training that maybe we don't see to make sure that that, that gel and that fitting amongst the players is really working because, you know, you're not going to play as a team otherwise, are you? Absolutely not. And like we said at the start about the objectivity, so the statistics that would have helped to secure the signings also go hand in hand with the personal connections as well. Mm -hmm. So, you know, they would have very much, the, the coaching staff in particular, would have been very much aware of the fact that new players coming into a new environment mm -hmm. need bedding in, they need that social connection as well. Yeah. It's not just about what they do as footballers, they're human beings yeah. as well, so they need that connection. And, you know, no doubt they would have put them into kind of clusters, units, and, and they've built their relationships mm -hmm. quite quickly. Yeah. Is that the kind of key then to keeping players happy? It's not just about how they interact on the pitch, but like you said, building those relationships and those connections kind of outside of the working environment yeah, as well? Yeah, absolutely. And I think, you know, they've got such a good squad now and such a depth of squad that there are players who are missing out completely. Yeah. And I think, no doubt, communication's key you know, talking to the players as to why they're not involved or why they might be a substitute or why they're starting yeah. helps to form a unity. And I think if you've got a healthy unity amongst the group, then people are going to be willing to help each other yeah. as opposed to fight against each yeah, other yeah. because someone's got someone else's spot. Yeah, well, I mean, if everyone was fit, you would have to leave out seven players, you know, every game, which I guess for those seven players is not the best position to be in. As a manager, while it is difficult, it's a good problem to have, isn't it? It's, a, it's an excellent problem. I think, you know, I don't think there's a manager in the land that wouldn't want that problem where mm -hmm. they've got the choice of so many players that they, they have the luxury of leaving players mm -hmm. out. But I think the calibre of the signings that they made, because they're, they're such good footballers, it also demonstrates the willingness for everyone to, e to improve themselves. Yeah. And if you surround yourselves with standards and you're willing to drive those standards up, yeah. everyone else will harness that same drive. Yeah. How do you know who to leave out? Because it's not a case that someone is good and someone is bad if they were bad you know they wouldn't be here is it more about the dynamics of how they work you know against certain situations and how they work with other players on the pitch depending on the opposition yeah I think it depends on the opponent you know depends what they're capable of doing if, if, if this was people will look at the fixture today and suggest mm -hmm. that Argos should dominate the ball it should be a relatively straightforward victory people yeah. would assume so therefore he might go for Steven Schumacher looks as if to he's gone for a little bit more of a creative front forward line sure. so that you know the players can get on the ball they're not relying on one person had it been a little bit more of a top of the table clash he might have gone for a little bit more resilience yeah. in midfield so it, it all depends on who's available you know the stats from the previous games what they intend to do, you know, the game plan mm -hmm. and, and so forth. Yeah, well, like you said, good problem to have and a good position for Argyle to be in. We'd, of course, as well like to hear your thoughts and your comments on the game today, how Argyle have been playing as a whole, and you can do so by getting in touch with us on social media. The top one is Twitter, that is at Argyle. You can find us over there. Send us a tweet, let us know where in the world you're watching from as well. We do always like to see how far afield the Green Army has spread itself around the world. So, um, do get in touch and we will be keeping an eye on those comments and reading them out throughout the rest of the show this afternoon. You are, of course, watching Argyle TV at the moment with me, Erin Black and Aaron Kuzak. And coming up after this, we will be joined by ex-Argyle player, John Uzel. Don't go anywhere.
welcome back. We are watching Argyle TV here, and I am joined by our next guest, John Uzel. You turned up in the nick of time, John. You were over there signing autographs. I, I think. was, Erin. Yeah, there was a few guys that used to get autograph or hunt autographs off me when I was playing. So yes. it was nice to catch up with them again. Fantastic. Now we'll just uh, introduce you for. I mean, I'm sure everyone watching already knows who you are, but you are the former Argyle left back, part of the side who reached the semi-finals of the FA Cup back in 1984. What a time to be at Argyle. Talk to me about that a little bit. Yes, uh, well, obviously it was a fantastic time. That cup run was really, really special for the club. Yeah. Um, we, we, we beat some good sides on the way, mm -hmm. West Brom away. And, uh, of course, Derby was an epic uh, draw at home. And then we everybody thought that was it. And then yeah. we went up there and beat them 1-0 yeah. and got ourselves into that semi-final position. Now, you, do you get asked about that run all the time? Like when you're over there, is that what people are talking to you about? Um, yeah, well, it does crop up many, many times, I must admit. And um, I think not unlike the time that we've got at the moment, you know, when you're in a good vein of form and you're winning matches, everybody wants to know you and everybody yeah. wants to follow you, don't they? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, of course, opposite, opposite wing to you, but playing against John Barnes, what was that like? Yeah, well, to be fair, um, I never really saw a lot of John Barnes that day. No, he stayed over the other side. So whether he was afraid to come over, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I think, yes, that is the, that's the message that we need to be getting across. John Barnes is afraid of you. Um, to do that with your hometown club as well, it must have been pretty, a pretty special moment. Yes, yeah. Uh, and I've said a few times today, uh, the playing here was my dream. Uh, you come here to watch to start with, you know, and then you get that little feel for it. And as a boy, I was I love my football. Yeah. And uh, to get the opportunities to I played for Plymouth Schools, and then I went to Devon, and then yeah, yeah, yeah. obviously got an opportunity here when I was uh, 13, I think, really? when, I, when I first came here. Oh my goodness. And because uh, back in the day, you never they never brought them on so young. Right. So yes. uh, you you know you would be 12, 13 that you would be introduced. I used to come up here training with um, Chris Harrison and the res and the reserves on a Tuesday night, mm -hmm. and then so it developed into trials and and. and an apprenticeship after that, which yeah. was, for me, it was just the dream come true. And and seeing how Argyle has, has grown and developed from your time to mm. now, what do you make of, you know, Home well, Park and the club? Yeah, I'm just saying it's just been amazing. The, and I think it's the, the whole picture now. You know, uh, we went on good runs. We had good promotions even. Sometimes we, um, I, in fairness, I never got a relegated team. I, <laughs> I, I missed it. You know, maybe a year before yeah. or after, but uh, Great. <laughs> uh, I wasn't relegated when I was here, which yeah. I'm really proud of. Yes. Um, but yeah, um, it, it's, it, the atmosphere now is very similar and it's fantastic. Mm -hmm. I mean, you've had some pretty special moments in your career other than Villa Park. What else is up there for you? Um, well, I was lucky enough, uh, the club gave me a testimonial and mm -hmm. uh, Brian Clough from Forest brought his team down here and we beat them 6-1 on mm -hmm. the night. That was a really special night for me personally yeah. and I had 6,000 Argo fans chanting my name and shouting for me and yeah. it was a horrible night. It was pouring with rain. They probably would have called the game off had it been a league match, okay. but they went ahead with it yeah. and uh, yeah, and it was uh, fantastic for me. Yeah. Uh, league matches... Do you know what? I, I think when I look back, all the games that you play are special because yeah. you're just out there playing. It's nice. Oh, and, and your name is special as well because it's up there with the likes of Tynan and Hodges as well. That must be quite nice for you. Yes, of course. I mean, uh, we, I was fortunate enough to play in that in a group with a group of lads for maybe seven or eight years, mm. and we came from very young. And we developed together, and it was nice, nice to be involved with all those players, yes. Yeah, and using your expertise as your time here as an Argyle player, looking at the squad we've got at the moment, well, you know, a quick one on the full-backs. Bally Mumba's doing pretty well at the moment. What, what do you make of yeah, him? And are I'm, there any other players as well yeah, that stand they're, they're out? Yeah, they're definitely playing a nice style of football as well. So they're getting forward and they're getting pressure on. Uh, they're playing through the channels like they do now. Mm. And, uh, and it's nice to watch, you know, that... And, like you say, the fullbacks, they play in a little bit probably more advanced than we used to. But, um, but yeah, it's nice to see. And uh, he's got them playing really well as a unit together. Yeah. Do you get the chance to come and see Argyle games often? In all honesty, I, I've, I come to maybe two or three games. Uh, I, I try to get here more. But yeah. um, sometimes, you know, it's nice to just... I think as an ex-player, it's yeah. nice to, to miss a little bit Absolutely. and then come back rather than come like a fan every single week. Yeah, you can it's not kind quite, of look at it with fresh exactly, eyes a little bit It's not bit quite the well. same because if, if, like this situation there, you know, you have I talk to you every single week, it's just a, a boring <laughs> old conversation, out, isn't it? We've run out of things to say. <laughs> exactly, we've yeah. run out of things to say. But, so coming back then, you know, you're, I assume you'll have been away for a little while, coming back into Home Park this afternoon. You must be looking forward to seeing the game this afternoon. Oh, then. I am. I yeah. am so thrilled to be here. And the weather's 
absolutely stunning. But we've had some horrible yeah, weather no, lately, right. and, and this afternoon. Um, the gods are with us and it's a beautiful sunny afternoon yeah. great for football that's what i yeah. mean there's not a breath of wind out there mm -hmm. it should be a you know a classic game really and i'm hoping that we'll get a good result as well as do i hopefully you can be our good luck charm this that, afternoon that would be thank lovely, you yes. very much for your time john okay. i hope you enjoy the game john uzel there uh, right one man in the argyle squad today who will know a lot about the opposition is a midfielder callum wright our new man spent two seasons at cheltenham winning promotion and becoming a real fan's favorite so is he looking forward to today a couple of days out from your first taste of home park uh, how much are you looking forward to that? Yeah, I'm buzzing, I'm excited. Um, I've seen, seen video online and seen the play here last year. And it's, it's a great place, so can't wait to get out there. Yeah. You've had, you've been here for a couple of weeks now. Obviously integrated with the squad, a couple of match days as well. How has everything been? Yeah, it's been it's been fluent and all the lads have been good. Um, obviously, just the, the, they're all tops to be fair. So I've made a few good mates here already, and the staff as well, just so helpful. And, yeah, it's been really fluent. A weird twist of fate sees your first home game, potentially if you're, if you're playing, against a side you spent two seasons at in Cheltenham. Uh, I mean, talk to us about that. Yeah, I'm just mad, eh? <laughs> mad how, how it works out. Um, when it's hard to do again, I could see that, and it's going to be my first home game. And obviously, I'm, I'm excited for it. Like, it's, a, it's a great little club, Cheltenham, and I can't wait to see the lads and some of the staff and that there. But. Obviously, at the end of the day, we've got to get the job done, and I can't wait for that to play against them now. So. When, when you signed, we spoke about your time at Cheltenham and promotion in there. Uh, then last season, terrific goal scoring season and assists and performance wise. Um, just again, talk to us of kind of how, what, what your experience at Cheltenham was like. Uh, I was just happy. Uh, I enjoyed every minute of it, honestly. Like, um, it was, the second season was tougher with, in terms of results. We weren't always winning because we went into the next division, but um, it was just good. It was a good time. The lads were good there, and um, you can you can tell why they're getting success. Like it's a great environment to be. In. Have you ever played against a former club before? N not really. I played against Tramia. Obviously, I was there when I was youth. Okay. I played against them on Sky Sports when we won the league at Cheltenham. To be fair. So that was probably the only time, but it must have been like a ten-year gap. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, I mean, what are your emotions about it? Uh, ruthless. Uh, obviously, I want to. At the end of the day, we, we, we've got a name and we've got to win the game. So, we don't want to achieve that aim at the end of the season. So, I uh, will be ruthless, and like, I'm looking forward to getting our fans off our feet too. You know? Welcome back. Nice to hear from one of our new signings there. We asked you, of course, to get in touch on social media. I'm pleased to say the comments have already started rolling in. And we'll kick things off with the Mugs Up crew over in the USA. Ken Seelman is watching. Who else have we got? Patrick Jacobs from Yardley, PA. All of my DMs. Joe Johnston, Carolyn Possett. And of course, I have to mention, and we'll try and show this at halftime because week on week he outdoes himself. Tatsumaki Bones, our Japanese fan, the other week printed my face onto a mask. I am pleased to announce I have now made it onto a t shirt. So uh, we'll get a photo of that to show you at halftime. You continue to impress and amaze me. Thank you very much for getting in touch. Um, let us know where else you're watching from. I'm hearing that a couple of uh, fans are stuck on the train from Newton Abbott. I hope that you managed to get here in time, but uh, while you're waiting, carry on watching Argyle TV and then you won't miss anything. Uh, thank you very much to everyone for getting in touch so far. And as we now get closer to kickoff, the time is of course half past two, we will be continuing our build up right here. Um, but first, or in a moment in fact, we will be hearing from the Cheltenham boss, Wade Elliott in just a moment.
This is Argyle TV, just under half an hour away from kickoff now. And as mentioned previously, we've got a little chat with Wade Elliott to have a look at. Argyle, of course, this afternoon playing Cheltenham Town. And the visitors come to us from a bit of a poor patch. They've lost their last three matches in the league and they sit just four points away from the relegation zone at the minute. But having said that, their performances have been OK and manager Wade Elliott very much wants to stress that. They've just got to concentrate on finding a level of performance because ultimately, you go back over our, some of our games recently, we've been done by, been done by a worldie at Plymouth uh, when we play Plymouth at home, been done by a worldie at Derby, uh, an offside goal at Rovers, but the performances in all those games have given uh, have put us in the conversation in the mix. So all we can keep doing is performing, giving ourselves a chance. And there will come a time when, you know, we're not getting, people aren't banging in 40 yards goals against us and the bounce of the ball goes for us. So just keep churning out a decent level of performance, put ourselves in the conversation, keep asking questions um, and our time will come. Does it feel like you're playing Plymouth every other week at the moment? Because obviously you've got the trophy semi-final coming up against them. And, you, know, you only played them at home on Boxing Day. Yeah, I think it's just the way the fixtures fall sometimes, isn't it? I think there's always one or two teams that you play in close, in close succession. Um, being really honest, the cup game's not not on our radar yet. We're fully focused on on this weekend. But I, I guess you know you know plenty about them. You know obviously what's required, but you also know that you can give them a game. Yeah, we know. Well, we. I don't think it's arrogant to say, but I think when we're when we're at our when we hit our levels and when we're at our best, we think we're competitive against anybody. Um, obviously, we know Plymouth. We know a lot about Plymouth. We know they're a good side. Um, you know, they're top of the league for a they're top of the league for a reason. So, not taking anything for granted, and the home record's very good. Um, but. Like I say to you quite a lot, we'll concentrate on us and get into our level. Um, and like I said there, we'll, we'll try and find a performance. Hello again. I am joined here with Aaron Kuzak as we wrap up this pre-match version of Argyle TV. But before we do, we're going to have a little look at the teams again, starting with Argyle, of course. Your starting 11 for this afternoon are comprised of Michael Cooper, Macaulay Gillespie, Jordan Houghton, James Wilson is captaining the side today, Dan Scar, Ryan Hardy, Barley Mumba, Finn Azaz, Callum Wright, Jay Matetti and Tyreek Wright. And on the subs bench we have Callum Burton, Matt Butcher, Joe Edwards, Danny Mayer, Sam Cosgrove, Nigel Lomvike and Ben Wayne. Aaron, any players in there that have stood out to you over whether they I mean if they're brand new we won't know really yet but of the whole squad who you know who, who's your top picks who are you liking the look oh, of this season that's a really difficult question Aaron to be honest because I think they've all demonstrated consistency and their value and their worth at some point but mm -hmm. I think the ones who are catching the eye more regularly for me mm -hmm. like people like Bali Mumba yeah. I think He's been invaluable to, you know, his contributions recently in, in the big games in particular have, have been, you know, worth their weight in gold. Uh, it's great to see Finizaz back. Yes. I think he was in terrific form before he got injured. And whilst you don't normally attune something, you know, like they had a little bit of a wobble just before Chris was in form. Yeah. You know, you normally uh, akin that to kind of people who have, have lost their place or got injured. I think Finn is as was a big loss, so it was yeah. great to see him back out on the pitch today. It certainly felt that way when the injury was announced yeah. and, you know, very much getting into his stride here at Home Park. So I think it's safe to say he will be very well welcomed back very yeah. well uh, shortly. We'll take a look as well at our opposition for this afternoon in the form of Cheltenham. And their lineup is as follows. Luke Southwood, Sean Long, Charlie Raglan, Will Goodwin, Alfie May, Caleb Taylor, Will Ferry, Elliot Bonds, Taylor Perry, Ryan Broom, James Oliyinka, and then on their substitutes bench, Sean McDonald, Ben Williams, Tom Bradbury, Charlie Brown, 
George Lloyd, Dylan Barkers and Christian Norton. You already mentioned uh, Alfie May is, is one of the players that you've got your eye on this afternoon, Aaron. Talk to me a little bit more about that. Well, I think it's his threat. I mean, he scores a lot of their key goals. You know, they're not a particularly um, high scoring side. They've not scored many goals as a, as a team this year, but he's scored the bulk of them. So it demonstrates what he's worth to the side. Um, he's, he's quite slight in nature. He's very agile. He gets into good spaces and he, and he scores important goals for them. So he's definitely worth you know, watching and keeping an eye on. And no doubt Argyle would have done their homework on him to see where he thrives. Is he more of a central player? Is he someone who likes to drift into pockets? And you know that's part and parcel of the yeah. development. And Ryan Broom as well. We're seeing him back at home park. What will the dynamic be like, bearing in mind a lot of Argyle players will have played with him and now they are playing against him this afternoon? Well, well yeah, I mean, it's that you kind of, when you go to clubs that you've previously played mm -hmm. for, you kind of know their ins and outs a little bit. Um, you kind of know their strengths, you might yeah. know their weaknesses, but if they've had a period of time away, you don't know what they've been working on to, yeah. to heighten their weaknesses or improve their strength. So it all depends. I think Callum Wright had a spell at Cheltenham, so he's on the opposite kind yeah, of exactly. side to, to Ryan Broom. And, it, and I know he was involved in their promotion push, I think. Mm -hmm. So, you know, he's going to have lots of attributes that Cheltenham are, are aware of as well. So it, it, you've just got to do your best in yeah. preparation for the team that you're playing yeah. for. Well, it'll certainly be uh, interesting to watch it and want to watch on the pitch. Before we hand away from our commentary in just a moment, which will be done by Ian Stonebridge and Charlie Price, uh, Aaron, a, a quick word from you on today. After last week's decent away points, you know, drawing, no losses, Argyle really need to capitalise and, you know, ideally get a win to, to keep their distance at the top of the table. Absolutely. I mean, obviously, they'll be looking naturally at Sheffield Wednesday and Ipswich. Sheffield Wednesday have got the game in hand that will take them level on points. But I think Plymouth would much rather have the points on the board than yeah. the game in hand. Um, I think it was a terrific point last week away at Ipswich, you know, and having looked at the, the game and the highlights, you know, worthy of that point as yeah. well. It's not like they scored late and, you know, snatch and grab. It was a, a well worth, uh, worthy point. And, you know, they're going to want to go into the game today positive, mm -hmm believing that they can get a comfortable victory or if they have to endure it, they've got the options on the bench to um, to make the changes if need be yeah. to go from plan A, B or C. And is that the kind of performance you're expecting then? Hopefully not one like we've seen previously where they are working right up until the very final moment. Maybe something a little bit more comfortable from them today? It's a hard one to call because, like I said earlier, like Cheltenham have lost five of the last six, but all five of those games they've lost by the odd goal. So it's not like they're being you know, put to bed quite easily yeah. by teams. So they're a very kind of dogged and resilient team. Um, so Argyle, but Argyle have got to go into the game knowing that if they play to their capabilities, they seem to have come out of the other side of their little blip, if you want to call it a blip, albeit one defeat in that blip, where they weren't playing as freely as they would have liked. Mm -hmm. So if they've come out the other side now, new signings, a beautiful day in yeah. front of a packed out crowd, they want to put a show on. Yeah, and we, we've got to just focus on the Papa John's trophy as well. Cheltenham today in the league. Cheltenham again are essentially standing in the way of getting to the final at Wembley. Do you think there will be any element of Stephen Schumacher and the rest of the, the staff keeping an eye on this game in relation to, to what's coming? Not until the final whistle goes, I think. I think, you know, the, the, all the focus will be on today. You know, that's a few weeks away yet. Mm -hmm. It's going to be, naturally, it's going to be the next thing that they're going to think about as it draws nearer. But today is about who they're playing against, the 11 players that they're playing against, and, you know, getting the three points. Yeah, because, I mean, we've spoken about the Papa John's Trophy previously. Kind of starts off a little bit slow, and as you get closer and closer and closer to the final, and now the final is more or less in sight for Argyle, the stakes do, you know, have increased and there does seem to be a little bit more interest of it. You know, the ability to take all the fans to Wembley will certainly be a nice occasion. Um, so do you think when that comes around, we'll be seeing Stephen Schumacher putting, you know, his, his proper full squad out to the best of their capabilities to hopefully get a win? It's a really good, again, it's a good point because, like you say, at the start of the kind of journey, they normally tend to give the younger kids a game exactly. and things like get some experience. But there's a chance to play at Wembley. There's a chance to win a trophy. Yeah. You know, and if they can get promotion and win the league, that's two trophies they could potentially win. And, you know, people want silverware as well to yeah. go with the could successes. Be a big year for yeah, Argyle. absolutely. So, naturally, the closer you get to Wembley, I think mm. the attention turns to a bit more serious of who they're going to select and, and try to win the games to win the trophy. Yeah, absolutely. Well, um, I'm going to ask you one final question before we hand over. Can I push you for a score prediction? I'm going to go 2 0. <laughs> 2 0. Yeah, 2 0 to, to Plymouth, Argyle. obviously. Yeah, <laughs> 2 0. 
with a Finizaz goal, I think. OK. Oh, yeah, that's an interesting. Sometimes we do score predictions and nobody actually pushes for who a goal scorer might be. It'd be a nice welcome back for Finn, wouldn't it, if he yeah, could it would uh, be. It would slot be. one so. into the back of the net. Especially uh, if we can get it in front of the fans as well down at the Devonport end. Thank you very much, Aaron. Let's have a little uh, look at some of the other games that are being played today as well before we go over to the comms team. Some of the ones that are worth mentioning for you include uh, Sheffield Wednesday because they are just three points behind at the moment and they have a game against Fleetwood. Ipswich as well are away to Oxford and it's a promotion uh, hopefuls battle at Pride Park where Derby take on Bolton as well. So just a few of the standouts to be keeping an eye on. But of course, we will give you all the updates at halftime and full time as well as the scores come in and see how the table is looking. Right. I make it almost quarter two. So that is us pretty much done here for the build up here on Argyle TV. You can follow all the action, of course, on Argyle TV and on the website, pafc.co.uk. And if you are watching overseas, you can stream the game here for £10. And if you live in the UK, then commentary will be available to purchase for £2.50. And as mentioned before, Ian and Charlie will be doing that for you. From the commentary box, just over to my right-hand side. Head over to pafc.co.uk for all the details on how you can buy your pass. And don't forget as well to get in touch with us on social media. Me and Aaron will be back at half-time and full-time to read them out and, of course, show you the fabled... Erin Black t-shirt that has been made over in Japan. Uh, I will now leave you in the very capable hands of Ian Stonebridge and Charlie Price, who are bringing you all the commentary for this afternoon's game. It is Plymouth Argyle against Cheltenham Town. On the edge on of the, the area. area, gets it onto his left foot. Mumba! Well, if that doesn't get you in the mood, I don't know what will. Afternoon, everybody. It's a beautiful, sunny day here at Home Park. 